creator, grandfather, Dal Key, we give thanks this day and we ask for blessings upon those that have prepared this food, that it may strengthen and nourish our bodies, our minds, our souls. We give thanks for the opportunity to gather, to honor four Native Americans from our community. We remember those that are not with us, unable to be here, or traveling. We ask for blessings upon them, their families, their friends. Dal Key, we come before you. We are humble two-legged. We give thanks. Onde, onde, the best it can possibly be. Onde, onde, to the singers, to the dancers, their families. Onde, onde, to everyone in attendance. Key, grandfather, creator, once again we come together and give praise and honor to you and thank you for the many blessings and again, onde, onde, for this day, we say these things in your name, aho, aho. Please remain standing as we welcome and present to you the grand entry of our Eagle staff and our dancers. Here we go. Bring them in. First flag of this nation, of this land, the Eagle Staff, Larry Harrison. How about a big round of applause for Larry Harrison? Thank you, Larry. Bringing in our dancers. Aho, aho. Good to see our southern and our northern cloth dancers. Welcome, ladies. Welcome. Followed by our jingle dress dancers. Good singing. Good dancing. All right. Here we go. Welcoming our fancy stall dancers as well. Aho, aho. Our northern traditional dancers, followed by our grass dancers. How about a big round of applause for all our dancers? Good to see you. Aho, aho.
over to our Napsters, our wagon burners, flag song, please. Long before the national anthem composed by Francis Scott Key. The first peoples of this land had these flag songs, national anthems for these tribes, paying homage to the first flag of this land, the Eagle Staff, remembering our veterans as well, the warriors, whether going to battle or returning from battle. Paying homage to their service, paying homage to this flag. We've always honored our veterans, our warriors. Remember our fallen veterans and those still at battle. Right into a victory song. Here we go. Everybody dance. in Rockin' San Francisco City Hall Indian Way. How about a big round of applause for all our dancers, all our singers. All right. Once again, let's hear it for our singers, our dancers, all the way from everywhere here in the San Francisco Bay Area. All right, good singing, good dancing. Posting the Eagle Staff at this time. Big shout out to Larry Harrison for taking care of our Eagle Staff. Aho, aho. 
may be seated. Calling up to the podium at this time, Michael Lupitan from KQED. He is the Vice President of Marketing and Branding. Michael? Okay. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Michael Lupitan from KQED, and I wanted to really start by just welcoming you all to this year's eighth annual American Indian Heritage Month celebration. We're very, very honored this year to be celebrating four local heroes um, from the community who have really tirelessly worked throughout the year to provide the kind of community service that public media is all about, but that all an engaged community and a robust heritage is all about. Um, nominated by community members and leaders, these local heroes work tirelessly at the grassroots level and represent the highest values that we all share. Um, as a member-supported public media organization, KQED is committed to building community, and in November, we will be celebrating American, American Indian Heritage Month with a series of special programs on all of our television channels, including, including KQED, KQED Plus, and KQED World. Many of these programs are provided by Native American Public Television, which is actually an organization that supports Native producers and Indian countries. Um, uh, in partnership with public television and public radio. So um, it's a fantastic organization and they have um, shared a lot of unique programs with us. Two highlights are Racing the Res, a rare view into contemporary reservation life, and Defending the Homeland, Native Americans in the United States Armed Forces. In just a few minutes, we're going to, you're going to get to officially meet this year's four local heroes, that's the term that we like to use for people who are chosen by the community to be, really win an award that symbolizes something very, very special. But before we get started, I think it's very important for all of us to thank the city of San Francisco for hosting this event in... Yeah. <laughs> applause, applause. Thank you. Um, it's really, this is really quite a beautiful space and it's really an honor to be standing at the base of this staircase and in this incredible rotunda. And um, once again, I also want to thank the singers and dancers and drummers for sharing their heritage and all of their talents with us. It just adds to this very, very special event. So thank you very much for joining us and please make sure to tune into KQED through November. Thanks. All right, so thank you, Michael. And I'd like to call to the stage at this time, Mr. Joaquin Torres, the Director of the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Good to see you again. Well, uh, good evening, everyone. And uh, just to, um, to reaffirm on behalf of Mayor Lee, it's such a pleasure to have um, all of you uh, here tonight inside City Hall, our humble abode. Uh, to all of our performers and musicians. Um, it's such a pleasure to have you here and bring some life uh, into these what can be at times very cold walls. We need people like you uh, to continually remind us what we're doing here. And so we thank you, um, KQED, um, to Joanne Martinez, Susie Kemioki, to Michael Lupitan for coming outside of the studio and gracing us with your presence here inside City Hall. I know um, most likely the public broadcasting world is quite happy from the election results last night. We can all continue to make sure that we're delivering programming for our communities. And I know that we were all very inspired by the president's words last night when he talked about the importance of diversity. And here in San Francisco, we are no stranger to that kind of language when we celebrate our Filipino community, our Hispanic community, our Latino community our Asian community, our Filipino, and of course our American Indian, our Native American community here in San Francisco. We continue to build upon our city's long-standing history, where we celebrate diversity and multiculturalism as a cornerstone of our lives. And here tonight, we are here to recognize and celebrate the American Indian community's accomplishments and history that enriches the diversity of our great city. These events are so special to us because it gives us the opportunity to recognize our local heroes, our unsung heroes, 
whose work goes unnoticed, and it's an opportunity for us to share that with the larger community. And so I would very much like to thank the Native American Organizing Committee, made up of the Native American Health Center, the Indian Health Center of Santa Clara Valley, of course, KQED, um, our office, and I would like to make a special note of um, one of our employees who's been very, very diligent about serving the community, all communities here in San Francisco, Luis Figueroa. Luis, if you would raise your hand. Thank you so much for all the work that you do on behalf of our communities. And of course, you'll recognize the Native American AIDS Project. You know, again, to borrow, uh, to borrow from the President's words, our San Francisco and our Bay Area community moves forward because of you. We move forward because of you and the honorees and your work that we recognize tonight because it reaffirms the spirit that has triumphed over war and depression, the spirit that has lifted this country from the depths of despair to the greatest heights of hope. The belief that while each of us will pursue our own individual dreams, we are a San Francisco, a Bay Area family, and we rise or fall together as one nation and as one people. And so I would like to invite up to the stage to receive um, what we present uh, in recognition of this very important event, Ms. Liz Hunt, the CEO of the Indian Health Center of Santa Clara County. On behalf of Mayor Lee, um, uh, in recognition and honor of the organizing committee, we would like to say that it is resolved that on behalf of the mayor of the city and county of San Francisco, we do hereby proclaim November 2012 as American Indian Heritage Month in San Francisco. Smoky Bay Singers, two starts, Napsters, two starts, here we go. about a big round of applause for all our dancers. Good singing, good dancing. Here we go, Indian way. Napsters, keep it going. Make them dance. Dance your style, dance your style. There you go, get it. Our 
Dancers were led in by Larry Harrison. The dancers will be led out. How about a big round of applause for all our dancers, all our singers. Aho, aho, got one. All right. It's a great honor to bring to the stage at this time, Liz Hunt on behalf of the American Indian Health Center, Santa Clara Valley. Thank you, Earl, and thank you, everybody. It's an honor to be here tonight. Um, I'm Liz Hunt, the CEO of the Indian Health Center, and we've been honored to serve the American Indian community in the South Bay for over 35 years. It is my pleasure to introduce our first honoree, Anacita Yazi Hernandez. <clears throat> Anacita is Dene and the Substance Abuse Prevention Program Coordinator and Youth Services Coordinator at the Indian Health Center. She is a 29-year-old mother of two, Liliana and Shanto, and she's also pursuing a bachelor's degree in psychology. She serves as a board member for the American Indian Alliance of Santa Clara County and is actively engaged with the San Jose Intertribal American Indian Community. Through her work, she serves as an advocate for the promotion of healthy lifestyles and life choices. She has coordinated San Jose's Honoring Sobriety Powwow for the last three years, which will be held um, on Sunday, November 18th this year. Each year, Anacita and her team hosts a sporting event to bring natives together to promote wellness. She believes that in culture-based community events lies the key to developing in youth the sense of self-worth and resiliency necessary for them to succeed. Anacita prides herself in the design and implementation of an arts curriculum that includes, but is not limited to, beadwork, sewing, and dance. She is a firm believer that these traditions and their intrinsic values is instill both a sense of solidarity and pride in being responsible young individuals in a contemporary urban landscape. In addition, her years of dance experience has led her to be a respected, decorated, and sought after resource for many Bay Area presentations. She regularly extends her culture's influence through school presentations, theater performances, and in leading discussions and after hours mentorship activities. She is a member of the Ingenuity Project, a team developing an animated documentary about Native American social issues. Anacita co-founded Native Boogie and Beats, a collective of Bay Area artists expressing their traditional values through song, dance, and design. She wishes to honor those that have given her permission to share these traditions and does so through her work and involvement. And let's now watch a video. Uh, so my name is Anacita Hernandez, and I also coordinate our substance abuse prevention program. There's all these great things about dance. You know, they're just on the surface, like it feels good, the music catches you, it brings a sense of pride um, for myself, and then also for like, I see it with the people that do dance. It's an honor, you know, to, to be able to dance in the arena to be able to wear like our regalia, you know, when things happen, when, you know, we face those obstacles or we, we hit those speed bumps, we're gonna have something to look at. We're gonna have something to fall back on. We're gonna have like, no, this is who I am. The first thing that I thought of was, you know, my daughter and making her proud of me 
you know, it doesn't happen every day, but it, it feels really good. So when I was able to share that information with her and, um, you know, have her blessing and to be proud of me, like, because I'm proud of her every day, but, you know, to give it back. And, um, so that kind of thing just fills my heart. And, I just really appreciate it. All the different groups and all the different teams that I'm a part of and all the people that I'm, I'm able to share like my life with and you know be a part of their life. I just I just I really I'm very fortunate. And let's welcome Anacita Yazi Hernandez to the stage. So I want to present this award on behalf of KQD and the American Indian community to this amazing young woman who does so many things and is so important to our community. Thank you, Anacita. Thank you. Pepperoni, crackers, cereal. Oh, wait, this is my grocery list. Oh. <laughs> I was really trying not to be emotional, but um, all the work that I do and all the time that I spend, it, it really is um, just me being a mother. And... Um, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have my family, to have all of my friends and, and my great, the great teams that I work with. I'm, I'm really fortunate to have them in my life because without them, you know, without having support, I wouldn't have been able to do a lot of the things that I've done. Um, and also to be surrounded by, by dreamers because you know, to have that inspiration, to see them, to see pe other people dream and dream big, it really inspires me. And I always feel like I'm not doing enough, you know, because I am surrounded by these, these amazing people. And I'm happy to see my family here. Because you are my family when I'm, a, I'm so far away from home. My family's out. Um, they live in Shanto, Arizona. And today, today I have my son with me, and this is Shanto, and he's representative. You know, I get to have home with me every day. <laughs> so I love my children. And, you know, my grandmother... One of, one of the really important lessons that I've learned and that I, really, I carry with me a lot is when my daughter was born, she was only, she was only a few months old, and um, we were with my grandma, and she was helping me take care of her one day. And my, my baby brother, Mahon, he was about, he was about four or five, and, you know, the living room was just full of toys. You know, every room had some toy in it. And my, grand, my grandmother, she was carrying my daughter, Liliana. And we were both coming into the same room at the same time. And as she came through the door, she tripped over a toy. And I... I was so scared because my daughter was only a few months old. But boy, did she know how to fall. She just rolled, and, you know, my daughter, she was still fully intact. She, you know, didn't hit the ground. She wasn't even crying. My grandma just, 
I was so amazed by the way she was able to roll and fall. And so as an adult, thinking back on a lot of my memories and remembering like the different lessons that people have brought to me, I, I remember my grandma and how she, she was able to fall, but she knew how to fall. And, and, and so w when I come to those, to those points in my life where I feel like I'm falling, I just know that, you know, we know how to do that. We know how to roll. We know how to roll. And when we work hard, we, we know how to work hard and, and do it with some style. So I'm really fortunate um, to have just a great family. And I'm really honored. Thank you. Is this somebody's purse up here? I know it's not mine. <laughs> I went through it, there's no money in it now. It's nice when they leave gifts up here for me. <laughs> With great pleasure, I would like to introduce Michael Duran. Michael Duran, come on up. Good friend, colleague. Good evening. Good evening. I'd like to thank everybody for being here today. I can't hear myself. Um, <clears throat> my name is Michael Duran. I'm the counseling director at the Indian Health Center in San Jose, California. I'm here to speak on behalf of Gwen Steerer um, and the American Indian Alliance. The American Indian Alliance was started um, in the mid-1990s to provide voice to the American Indian community in Santa Clara Valley. It was started by Laverne Roberts and uh, provides uh, two annual powwows, uh, numerous fundraisers. Gwen has been a member of the American Indian Alliance uh, for about 15 years now. Gwen uh, is a Seneca elder and retired from the American Indian, retired from the American Indian um, District Titles 4, 7, and 9 of the Indian Education Act. She is known to have gone beyond the limits of her duties for the American Indian families in her district. She spends her time volunteering for all community functions that the Alliance puts on. The families that she served in her capacity remember her fondly and love her for all that she did for them. As an American Indian Alliance Council member, Gwen offered her many talents to powwows, food booths, Stanford Elders Feed, graduations, and dinners. Um, let's watch a video on Gwen Steerer. Um, I'm Seneca, which we're known as the keepers of the Western Door. They're on the western side of New York, and actually they're the biggest of the tribes. I'm Tanawanda Seneca, which Tanawanda is the name of the creek that runs through our reservation now. For Indian community, there, are, there was nothing in the beginning. It was for 20 years that I worked in the school district, um, helping the children understand that their heritage was important important to be proud of being Indian because that gave them a lot of reason to study harder and to be a better student and stay in school. Where you come from is important from what, what your background is and your family. So we have to have Indian education. I don't think I'm much of a hero. I think I'm just, I just had a job to do that I did with the children at the school district. But I also like to include the whole community. That's why we put on the powwows and had different activities that everyone could attend. 
be proud that you're Indian. So we'd like to present Gwen with this Local Heroes Award from KQED. Thank you very much for all that you've done for the community, for yourself and for your family and all the relations. And uh, Gwen's gonna be saying a few words. We're gonna present her with this bag here. And um, thank you. Why, thank you, Michael. It's very nice to you to say those good words about me. Um, and my son even has some flowers, I see. Thank you very much, Tom. I have three sons. Um, Tom is the middle son, and he has a son also named Tom. So, but he's here today from Palm Springs. You live in Palm Springs, Tom? All over the place. All over. Well, thank you. And I, I'd like to thank my other friends. I saw so many of them here tonight. And it's really nice that you came for our, not just my friends, but the friends of Anacita and the others. Thank you for coming. Um, I, I also really think we should thank KQED. I mean, who else shows Indian movies and <laughs> honors Indian people? Like tonight, this is a great, great honor to be here in the City Hall of San Francisco. Um, the person that nominated me for this award is Laverne Roberts. Maybe some of you know her as Laverne Morrissey. She went home to her reservation. She Paiute, and she went back to her home. And where, where was, where is her home? In Yerington. Nevada. We went to visit her once and she's got a beautiful hot house and lives there and now she's even running for the, the, the council of her tribe. Um, Laverne was going to surprise me and be here this evening but she had an, an outbreak of one of her illnesses her foot started to bleed, and she, now she has to be on crutches for a while. So she had to give, turn in her plane ticket and her taxi fare. But otherwise, she would have been here tonight, and many of us know Laverne. And we'd like to say a prayer that she gets better soon and can come and see us. This is for Laverne. Yes, please. Let's clap our hands for Laverne. Thank, thank you. Laverne Roberts was honored here in this space um, two years ago. Thank you, Laverne. And I think I can say a lot more about being Indian and how much I'm proud to be Indian. I did work in the school district for more than 20 years. And the people that I worked with, they still call me up and tell me their troubles and, and ask for help sometimes. But thank you very much for, for all of you to come tonight. All right. Thank you, Gwen, and Anasita as well. I saw your family over there. I got a bunch of hugs, hey. <laughs> All right. Is Shirley here yet? Is Shirley Guevara here yet? Hey. <laughs> Good to see you, Shirley. Calling to the stage at this time. Amanda Bloom. Well, it's a great honor for me to be asked to introduce uh, Shirley Guevara. For any of you who know Shirley, whatever Shirley wants, Shirley gets. And so she said I had to introduce her, and here I am. Um, Shirley is an amazing warrior woman. She was involved in the occupation at Alcatraz. She's taught generations of 
children up at Hintel Kuka. She uh, supported me as a single mother, took care of my child up at Hintel Kuka. And I just think she's one of the most amazing women in our community. And I'm, she, this is a long overdue award for her. And congratulations, Shirley. So now we're gonna, now we're gonna have a video. My name is Shirley Guevara. I work for Oakland Unified School District Early Child um, Development Centers, Early Childhood Education. I'm Mono, California Indian. Our people come from um, San Joaquin Valley. My family's located 45 miles northeast of Fresno, below Kings Canyon National Park. The big sequoias. The best thing about working here is meeting all the families, um, connecting with the kids, and when it finally clicks to them, oh, that's what that means. It's like, it, even if it's small steps with some kids, um, it's, it's a great feeling that you've made an accomplishment in their lives that they'll remember. So here at Hintel, it started down at the um, IFH, then it moved to Second Avenue because it got too big. There was a parent preschool there, and then they outgrew that area. So we had to pick three choices of in the in Oakland that they wanted to have their childcare center at. And our parents chose this one because it's up in the hills. You don't feel like you're in the heart of Oakland, and it was more um, conducive to our setting and our lifestyle as Indian people. And and there a lot of our our kids who have graduated from here are doing community work. They're out there working with their people. So we have made a strong impact on kids. And you don't really think about it. You just do what you do and what comes naturally to, to raising kids and working with them. Tintel is one of the, is the only, um, within the state of California, the old, only urban American Indian Child Development Center. This, all of this couldn't have happened unless it, it did involve the community and the staff and, and people who truly care about Intel to keep it going. One of the things I forgot to say was there was a point where it, Hintel Kuka was in, in danger of being closed and Shirley led the efforts to keep it open. Oh wow, thank you guys for this honor. Um, Hintel has been there for a long time and we were in the process of losing it for a while, but the community came together. And it's not about me and it's not about Karen or the other people who are being honored because it takes a community. And you know that phrase that always says it takes a village to raise a child. It truly does. It takes each and every one of us and people in our community. Our, our education community, our Native American Health Center community, our CRC community, because once they leave us at Hintel, then somebody else has to pick up where we left off and carry that ball to educate our children. And we do look out here and I see, see our Hintel students, and it's good to see you guys. And um, I would just like to say thank you to each and every one of you for being here to honor all of us and um, keep your prayers open for Hintel that will always be there. Um, if I can hang in there for a couple more years, I hope to retire. <laughs> <laughs> Knock on wood. <laughs> um, thanks for all being here and uh, each of you uh, drive safely and um, thank you for your prayers and blessings and for those who went before us and those that are coming into the world. Hi, Paul. All my ex's kids have been taught by Shirley. Hey, <laughs> God, I'm kidding. <laughs> And again, with great pleasure, welcome Janet King to the stage. Hello, everybody. 
Um, I have the great honor and privilege to introduce and uh, to to uh, introduce Karen Harrison, who is also receiving this award tonight. Uh, Karen Harrison is a registered nurse and the clinic manager at the Native American Health Center in Oakland. She's a member of the Pomo and Paiute Nations in California. She's also from the Wailaki and Wintu Nations in California. She started out as a medical assistant in 1985 with the Native American Health Center and then went on to get, to, went on to get her uh, registered nurse degree. So she's been with the health center for 27 years and for 21 of those years she's been a registered nurse. Karen has greatly contributed to the Native American Health Center by continuing to share her knowledge and her wisdom with the medical department and the whole agency. Karen's dedication also extends to the local community as well. She has served as the chairperson of Hintel Kukov Parent Advisory Committee. She served as a board member of the Intertribal Friendship House, and she's also helped to coach American Indian children in the tribal athletics program. And she's also known by her coworkers as the patient whisperer. Whenever there's a patient that's angry or agitated, her coworkers always call Karen, and she's always successful in calming them down. Um, she's a mother, and she's here with uh, her family here tonight. Can all her kids kind of wave? And she's here with her sister and with lots of friends. And uh, now we're going to see a video, or a video about her. My name is Karen Harrison. I'm the nurse manager at Native American Health Center. I got into healthcare just by being the caretaker. You know, we grew up sometimes a, a lot of in a, a lot of pain and suffering, you know, just because of who we are, where we come from. And so early on, we learned to be caretakers, and, and that's just always stayed inside me. I, I think what we always need in the community and what always needs work is mentoring somebody behind us. And making um, sure that we're out there and finding those young people who are who will be the up-and-coming leaders. It's it's hard to think about myself as the leader in the community because I'm taught not to think about myself um, or to brag about myself. Except in prayer, we pray for ourselves first, so we could be stronger to help hold other people up. But to bring attention to myself goes against the way I was taught growing up. We don't brag about what we do, we just do it. Because that's our job and that's what we're here to do, we just do it. It's important to always do community work because we're teaching somebody without knowing it. Somebody's always watching us and it keeps our community strong. Everybody. I made myself cry again <laughs> just watching it but um thank KQED and it's like I said in the, uh, the little video here it was really hard for me to accept this because I don't think of myself and Martha did some convincing and she said remember there's always somebody watching somebody young is watching somebody old is watching and we have to carry ourselves in a good way because maybe somebody might want to be like us one day um, thank my co-workers for coming. Um, I gave this little speech a couple weeks ago and I broke down and blubbering all over crying, but I, I said two weeks ago that those are my heroes. You know, anybody that can choose to work in healthcare, servicing the people, you guys are my heroes. Shirley's my hero. Raising, you know, she's servicing people, and, and I think that's my message. Anybody that chooses to serve us people, you guys are awesome. You're all my heroes. And um, I think I just want to leave a quick little word of what an uncle told me this year, is that what makes it easy, well, actually what's hard is the hard task that he told us to go out every day and live a beautiful life. And I think if we can all do that, it's a good world, it's a good thing. <laughs> um, so thank you. 
And I, I thank my family for dancing. That was awesome for me to see. Um, thank you for coming out. Thank you, Lisa, for driving all that way. And my coworkers, like I say, you guys are all my heroes. And we came straight from work. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. One of the first times that the Harrison family has made it to City Hall and they're not paying a parking ticket, hey? <laughs> oh. Once again, congratulations to Anacita, Gwen, Shirley, and Karen. Can we have all the other recipients of this prestigious award? Please stand if you're able. Okay. Don't be shy. Gosh. Again, how about a big round of applause for, for all these standing. One of the greatest awards is to be honored by your community, by your own people. So again, my hat's off to, to all the recipients. For this year, we give thanks to the Native American AIDS Project, the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, San Francisco Native American Health Center, East Bay Native American Health Center, KQED, Indian Health Center of Santa Clara Valley. So once again, we applaud you and we thank you. Going back over to our singers, Smokey Bay, two starts on a song, one of your favorites, and Napsters, two starts as well. Dancers, you want to come in? All right, here we go. Make them dance. Take it away. Two starts.
would like to get the honorees. Can the honorees come up here by that first step? Napsters, if you could take care of this honoring song. Here we go. How about a big round of applause for all our honorees? Thank you, singers. Thank you, dancers. All right, so that concludes our program.